Hello, everybody, and welcome to Soccer 101. My name is Taylor Rockwell, and on this episode, we're going to be exploring how and why some football or soccer clubs are called what they're called. Why are there so many rovers in England, Spartas in Europe, and Greek gods pretty much everywhere in the world? We're going to try to find some answers. A bit of backstory to this episode. The idea for it came about after a recent conversation I had with my wife. I had a Premier League game on TV. She walked into the room, stared at it for a couple minutes, and then said, Who are the baggies? It says baggies in the stands. My response was, Oh, that's a nickname for West Brom. She sort of nodded and then was like, why are they the baggies? And to that, I had no answer. It's one of those things that if you sort of grow up in the area, I'm assuming you know, if you uh, are American and you just learn to watch the Premier League from abroad, it just becomes what they're called. But maybe you didn't think about why they're called that. Uh, I also find West Brom doubly confusing since they're West Brom, which Albion FC, and I also had no idea what Albion meant. A quick Google search led me to an article about team names, and many, many hours later, here we are. So... Let's get into some of the more prominent club names and nicknames that may have been causing you, dear sweet listeners, consternation of your own. Let's start in the UK and take a look at some of the more ubiquitous names. In England's top five leagues, there are a total of 17 towns, including Huddersfield, Swindon, and Crawley. There are 15 Uniteds and 14 cities. So we've got towns, we've got cities. You can even go more local if you want. Just ask Knott's County. United traditionally implies that a club was the result of a merger between two distinct organizations, though that's not the case for both Manchester and D.C. United. It was for Newcastle United when, in 1892, Newcastle East End and Newcastle West End decided to end their rivalry. If only Tupac and Biggie had been fans of soccer history, they would have been able to solve that East-West feud. Side note, uh, the Arabic version of United would be Itihad, which translates to the Union. There are al Itihad in Saudi Arabia, Jordan, Egypt, and Libya, so Itihad United, kind of the same thing. Back to England, another somewhat common name in the UK is Athletic, such as Charlton Wigan and Oldham in England, Dunfermline in Scotland, and Wrexham in Wales. The name denotes that these teams were all originally founded as athletic clubs that offered a range of sporting activities, not just football. This convention extends to a lot of clubs around the world. As you may have guessed, that would be Athletic Bilbao and Atletico Madrid, uh, but also Atletico Mineiro in Brazil, Atletico Nacional in Colombia. No word yet on the Oakland Athletics, but I hear Chad Bradford is a big Oldham supporter, so you never know. But those would be more generalized sporting societies, sporting clubs, athletic clubs. Some organizations weren't content to be generic and opted for specific sports. In many cases, those sports are no longer played or no longer a fundamental part of the club, but they are still represented in the names. For example, you may have heard of Besiktas from Turkey. They're officially Besiktas JK, which is Gymnastic Club, uh, when they were founded in 1903. OGC Nice, we know as Nice uh, in the French League. Olympic Gymnast Club de Nice, again, a gymnastic club. AC Milan were originally founded as Milan Football and Cricket Club. They dropped the Cricket Club. Genoa did not. Genoa is still called Genoa CFC, which stands for Cricket and Football Club. And while we're on the subject of the importance of cricket, English championship side Sheffield Wednesday were originally known as the Wednesday Cricket Club before starting an association football club in 1867. The cricket club was established by six butchers who all had the same day off work. And by day off, I mean half day because that was their weekend. Wednesday half day as your weekend is a bummer. As you may have already guessed, in figuring out some of these name origins, it gets a little confusing because you've got lots of different clubs trying lots of different things. Derby, a good example of this. Derby County FC was formed in 1884 as an offshoot of Derbyshire County Cricket Club in an attempt to give players and supporters a winter interest as well as secure the cricket club extra revenue. So you play it's cricket in the summer, you play football in the winter. The original intention was to name the club Derbyshire County FC to highlight the link, uh, though the Derbyshire FA, formed in 1883, objected on the grounds that it was too long, <laughs> which <laughs> really does feel like an 1883-centric complaint. I imagine the monocles were falling off with uh, reckless abandon at the, the length of the name. How could you do such a thing? The Derbyshire FA also argued that uh, the length of the name would make it impossible to understand to the fans, who could also mistake it for the Derbyshire FA themselves. That seems more likely as to what the objection was. They didn't want people treading on their turf. They demanded a name change, and Derby County obliged. 
Stoke City were initially known as the Stoke Ramblers, but they merged with Stoke Victoria Cricket Club in 1878 and then became Stoke City. Speaking of ramblers, that's a term used for hill walking in England, apparently. It's the name for the Cobb Ramblers in Ireland, who were originally a field hockey team. Make of that what you will. Our final instance of other sports leading to football clubs being established would be in Brazil, where a confusingly high number of teams were initially founded as rowing clubs, including Club de Regatas do Flamengo, a.k.a. Flamengo, Botafogo de Futebol e Regatas, a.k.a. Botafogo, and Club de Regatas Vasco da Gama, who went half rowing team, half Portuguese explorer, as you do. But at least those clubs had whole organizations and, most importantly, home facilities, which was not the case for the Rovers and Wanderers of the world. Yes, Blackburn and Wolverhampton were originally without a home ground and so had to go roving or wandering around, respectively. The first club to have this name was the appropriately named Wanderers FC, a 19th century all-star team of sorts. Uh, Fans of Netflix's The English Game might remember Lord Arthur Kinnaird. He played for Wanderers. Uh, They never had a home stadium and instead played at various locations in London and the surrounding area. This lack of home field advantage was not that big of an issue as they won five FA Cups in six years between 1871 and 1877. So if you were founded without a home ground, you were likely to be a rover or a wanderer. Along similar lines, when the newly reformed Newport County AFC were denied permission to use the club's former ground at Somerton Park and were forced to play their home games 80 miles north of their usual stomping grounds, they went with the slightly more dramatic nickname of Exiles. So you can go rovers, wanderers, or Exiles if that's the way you want to go. So we've looked at clubs that were founded as athletic clubs, clubs that were founded for specific sports, uh, as well as clubs that didn't have home grounds. Let's look at a few more sort of more specific ones. Uh, One final one in England would be Albion, the aforementioned. Brighton and Hove Albion, West Bromwich Albion, Burton Albion all have that in their names, as do several other clubs in England, which is fitting as Albion is an alternative name for Britain. It most likely originated from the Latin word albus, which translates to white, with speculation being that the Romans uh, would have used that name for the white cliffs of Dover and thus inspired Albion. I also didn't know that, I guess, Dumbledore is White Dumbledore, so that's an interesting title to have. Uh, While I ponder that one, I'm going to take us away from England in just a moment to look at some common and some less common naming conventions around the world. But first, a word from our sponsors. This episode of Soccer 101 is brought to you by ExpressVPN, who agree with you. It's not fair that Netflix hides thousands of shows and movies from you based on your location and then has the nerve to increase their prices. That's right. They've just raised their prices again. You could just cancel your subscription and protest or... Or you could be smart about it and make sure you're getting your full money's worth by using ExpressVPN. That's because you may be confident in what the options are for the Netflix in your country, but maybe less so in Japan's Netflix or the UK's Netflix. I looked up what's available in the UK. Uh, If you want a very intense, not at all chill evening, you could go Scarface. You could watch Voldemort himself eat a painting in Red Dragon, or you could relax a little bit with Oh Brother Where Art Thou. That might be my selection. But those are not available in the United States on Netflix. They are in the UK. ExpressVPN allows you to access them as well as movies in over 90 countries to choose from. ExpressVPN is also super fast. It works on your phone, laptop, even smart TV, so you can watch your shows on the big screen with zero buffering. If you are in the UK, it can also allow you to get a Peacock subscription. Just saying. So be smart. Stop paying full price for streaming services and only getting access to a fraction of their content. Get your money's worth at expressvpn.com slash soccer. Don't forget to use that link so you can get three extra months for free. That's expressvpn.com slash soccer. Expressvpn.com slash soccer to learn more. Thank you very much to ExpressVPN for sponsoring today's episode. Thank you to Stereo for sponsoring today's episode. If you are unfamiliar, the Stereo app has thousands of live social conversations with a wide range of genres for every interest, including news, comedy, sports, and more. You can choose whether to be a co-host and host your own episode. You can participate as a guest, or you can simply listen in on exclusive conversations. Some are regular folk having regular conversations. Some are people from podcasts you might know and enjoy, like this very podcast, talking about the topics of their podcast, which is what I will be doing this evening, Thursday, February 25th, if you're listening on the day. Uh, Alexis Guerreros of 
the Cooligans and I will be talking about this very topic from today's show, but also answering your questions and just having a general good time. If you would like to check that out, uh, download the Stereo app now, and then you can join us live. If you cannot make this evening's broadcast or you're listening to this after the fact, we will be doing stereo shows regularly every Thursday night, so feel free to stop by and check those out. We would greatly appreciate it. So download the Stereo app and follow us at Stereo.com slash RockwellTSS. A link will be uh, in the description to both my profile and uh, the broadcast for today. One more time, download the Stereo app and follow us at Stereo.com slash RockwellTSS. Thank you very much to Stereo for sponsoring today's episode. Now back to the program. Now let's get back to club names and the origins thereof. Let's talk numbers for a moment, because we have many different organizations with many different numbers in them, especially in Germany. Uh, those numbers tend to indicate when the club was founded. TSV 1860 Munich has one of the oldest numbers in the game, though that is slightly misleading. We're going to combine some research here. The TSV stands for, I do not speak German, I apologize, Turn und Sportverein, uh, and translates to Gymnastic and Sport Club. Football did get added to the roster until 1899, but that wouldn't sound as historically cool as 1860. 1899 Hoffenheim, though, did go with that one as their founding year. It took the football heads in Schalke another five years to get Schalke 04 up and running. In the two Bundesliga, there's also Hanover 96, uh, who were founded in 1896, not 1996, unlike everybody loves Raymond 96, and Darmstadt 98. So that tends to be when the number is at the end of the club name. When it's at the beginning, like uh, 1FC Heidenheim or 1FC Nuremberg, it means that they were the first club founded in their city. So armed with this knowledge, we can now finally understand that 1 Fußball und Sportverein Mainz 05 basically translates to the first football and sports club of Mainz founded in 1905. However, as the Bundesliga website itself explains, not all names are quite so linear, looking very much in your direction, Fortuna Dusseldorf. Here's the quote. Untangling Dusseldorfer Turn und Sportverein Fortuna 1895. Let's take that again. Dusseldorfer Turn und Sportverein Fortuna 1895. It's a tongue twister. May be a piece of cake by now, except for the Fortuna bit. Far from being a reference to the goddess of luck, the appellation originated when the founding fathers spied a horse and cart delivering goods for the local bakery called Fortuna. There's a lot of this in the footballing world where it seems like there's not really much more of a story besides like, hey, that worked. Racing Club in Argentina would be a good example of that. When looking for a name, one of the founders, I believe, had a French racing magazine and everybody thought racing's a cool word and they went with it and here we are. And then, of course, we have clubs named for historical figures, some real, some not. Uh, Spartacus is a big one, as is Sparta. At least seven clubs around the world have taken their name from Sparta, the Greek city-state who had Gerard Butler as king. I'm pretty sure that's what happened. The most famous would be Sparta Prague in the Czech Republic and Sparta Rotterdam in the Netherlands, but there are or have been Spartas in England, Malta, Scotland, Wales, and Norway. Spartak Moscow indirectly sort of counts in this one as well. Originally founded by a trade union, the club was seen as the people's team and had various names until they settled on Spartak in 1935, which is Russian for Spartacus, the gladiator slave with a jaw of Kirk Douglas. But here's where we have a little bit of crossover, because that then led me to wonder, well, where did Spartacus get his name from? Not a ton of sources going deep into the origins of a historical figure's name. What I did find out was that it literally translates to from the city of Sparta and was likely meant to convey that he was a skilled warrior. It was his slave name, so So the idea, I guess, would be that his uh, owner uh, wanted to convey that he was a ruthless killer and a military mind. And so he went with that. The less said about institutionalized slavery, the better. But I will say that I think it still counts because if he is from the city of Sparta, then I think he's technically named after Sparta. Uh, And since there are Spartaks in Bulgaria, Georgia, the country, Kazakhstan, Serbia, Slovakia, Ukraine, and five more in Russia, I'm saying we've got a lot of Spartas, Spartacuses uh, around the world. But Spartacus is definitely not the only figure from military history to influence football clubs. There's also Arminius, the former Roman general who led a unified Germanic coalition to victory against the Roman Empire. If you didn't know about him, current Bundesliga club Arminia Bielefeld can fill you in. 
There's also Club Bolivar in Bolivia, named after Simon Bolivar. Levski Sofia, named after Vasil Levski, the Bulgarian revolutionary and a national hero of the country. And Lech Poznan, named after Lech, the legendary founder of the Polish nation. It occurs to me, it's probably pronounced something different. I apologize, Polish listeners. These are obviously some prominent clubs, but there's a very famous team with connections to a rather fancy English knight who fought in the Hundred Years' War. Let's talk about it. Before he led a rebellion against King Henry IV and was later immortalized by William Shakespeare, Sir Henry Percy fought in several campaigns against the Scots. The story goes that the Scots were so impressed by his speed in battle and his willingness to, I guess, encourage his horse, is how we're going to put it euphemistically, uh, that he was nicknamed Harry Hotspur and the nickname stuck. As I said, he was a nobleman and his descendants owned land in the Tottenham Marshes where the club's original ground was located. And I'm guessing you can see the connection. And then we come to gods and goddesses, who have featured prominently in football naming conventions. Uh, AFC Ajax are obviously named after the mythical Greek figure, but so too are clubs in Brazil, the Congo, Estonia, and Honduras, to name just a few. Apollo, the Greek god of sunburn, also got some shout-outs in Cyprus from Apollon Limassol, and Georgia, the state, not the country, the Atlanta Apollos played in the NASL from 1968 to 1973, and again from 1979 to 1981, Gotta love the NASL. Uh, Ares, the Greek god of war, almost certainly supports Aris Thessaloniki in Cyprus. Hercules has clubs in Spain, the Netherlands, and Greece. And Atlas holds up the world for teams in Mexico and Argentina. Nertha, the goddess of fertility, hasn't been able to help her namesake Hertha Berlin give birth to Bundesliga championships. But the Greek goddess of youth and rejuvenation, Juventas, has been slightly more kind to her namesake. Many of the team names we've discussed so far have been in Western Europe, Southern Europe, or the rest of the world. We haven't talked much about Eastern Europe. Former Soviet and Soviet satellite countries reflect that historical influence pretty prominently. Obviously, there's the aforementioned Spartak influence, but here's a quick shorthand for you. CSKA, or SISKA, stands for Central Army Sports Club in most Slavic languages. SISKA Moscow and SISKA Sofia in Bulgaria would be examples. If the club is just SKA or ASK, it means the club is not located in the country's capital city. But either way, it means that there was a connection to the military. Usually it was the club of the military. Uh, And for, say, Honved, the incredibly successful Honved team of the 1950s, what that meant is that the military could draft famous soccer players into the military and then have them play for the military team. It works quite well. Somewhat more notoriously, clubs sporting the name Dinamo have a historical connection to the state's security apparatus, particularly the KGB. There are or have been Dinamos in Moscow, Berlin, Dresden, Zagreb, Tallinn, Tbilisi, and Kiev, to name just a few. I'm also keeping an eye on Houston, just in case. Just kidding. They're named after the uh, energy aspect of Dynamo, which is also where the name Dinamo originates. Lokomotiv means the club was originally founded as a team for railroad workers, uh, which would be the case for Lokomotiv Moscow, Lokomotiv Plovdiv in Bulgaria, Lokomotiv Astana in Kazakhstan, and Lokomotiv Leipzig in Germany. And obviously this is all just a small sampling. The hundreds of thousands of clubs the world over all have interesting stories about how they arrived upon their name. Well, most of them do. Less so certain recent uh, additions to our domestic league. But we still haven't come up with why West Brom are called the Baggies, and the answer, as with most explanations of team nicknames, varies greatly. And this is the difference between the name and the nickname aspect of things. Uh, The names tend to be pretty straightforward. The nickname's a little bit more convoluted, though the Fortuna Dusseldorf example is a good explainer of, maybe we named it after the local bakery? We're not entirely sure. This is definitely the case with West Brom, the Baggies. Uh, Let's look at a few possibilities. One suggestion is that the name was bestowed on Albion supporters by their rivals Aston Villa because of the large baggy trousers that many Albion fans wore at work to protect themselves from molten iron in the factories and foundries of the black country. This would have been a mocking nickname, which is fitting given that with just four miles separating Villa Park and West Brom's home ground, the Hawthorns, the very first meeting in a game between these two is believed to be the first recorded incident of football violence. 
West Brom club historian Tony Matthews, however, suggests that it derives from the bagmen, who carried the club's matchday takings in big leather bags from the turnstiles to the cash office on the halfway line. Other theories relate to the baggy shorts worn by various players during the club's early years. So we have a few different uh, possible explanations. All of them seem like they could be the inspiration for the name, but none of them are that exciting. None of them really uh, lock it in the way some others do. And that really is the downside to, uh, to researching club nicknames. Uh, sometimes the honest answer is not nearly as fun as as the creative one, unless you're Harry Hotspur. And with that, we come to the end of yet another Soccer 101 episode. I envision this as being part one of a larger series about team name, names and club nicknames, because I'm sure I'm going to get some messages for some ones I left out. And obviously, there are many, many more, especially nicknames to get into. Hartlepool United being the Monkey Hangers would be one. Uh, I promise it is not as horrifically offensive as it sounds, but is still horrifically offensive. And strangely, that somehow connects to the live stereo show I'm going to be doing later on this evening, Thursday, February 25th, with my friend and yours, Mr. Alexis Guerreros. Uh, he and I are going to be uh, on the stereo app at 8 p.m. Uh, going over some of these nicknames we mentioned here. I'm going to give him a quiz of sorts where I'm going to give him a team name or their nickname and ask him to come up with his explanation. Uh, and maybe we can make that the official one for, say, the baggies, and then we'll have a good Alexis Guerreros-inspired name explanation. Uh, But we're going to be doing that on the Stereo app again, 8 p.m. Please do uh, join us. It's going to be a good time. We're going to be giving out name explanations, but we're also going to be taking your listener questions, uh, having some chats back and forth. I am excited to get to hang with Alexis for a bit. So check that one out on the Stereo app. And until then... Thank you very much for listening to this episode. Obviously, there are many, many more in the Soccer 101 feed uh, from what do the numbers mean on the back of the jerseys to why do Adidas and Puma hate each other and many other topics in between. If you found this episode useful or interesting, please do uh, spread the word, pass it along. If, If you have someone in your life who's been curious about what United means or why Wolverhampton are the Wanderers, then you can point them in this direction. Thank you very much to everyone who has uh, listened to this episode. It is always greatly appreciated. I've been Taylor Rockwell. Thank you so much for listening. We will talk to you again soon.